So, uh, yeah, here we are, uh, almost the ending. Two more days of filming left. Uh, we're doing the series finale. And uh, all about it I love, I have to say, except the thing I hate is that it's actually uh, smells like an end. But I love these two episodes. I actually, I actually called uh, writers after I got the script, and I, I told them, I said, guys, if I could write an episode for Flynn, this would be it. It was really, I'm so happy with it. And the beautiful thing is that it's really written for, for the fans. Uh, we close, closed all the loopholes. We answered all the questions. You know, everybody's been asking about the, uh, the, the, the journal. What's in a journal? You know, when are we going to find out? And I've been always teasing, you know, on my Instagram. I was like, guys, this episode, we're going to find out something from the journal. And then we find out little bits and pieces. Now we're going to find out everything about the journal. Why? Who wrote it? Uh, how did it get to Flynn's hands? Uh, we can actually even see all of that. So uh, fans are going to be very happy because there's no going to be... Uh, Answer is not answered. And the beauty of it is also when we finish with our series finale, it's going to end up with where the story began in a pilot. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like a one big story that if you see only uh, the series finale, you're going to be, oh my God, I want to watch this show. And it's going to start exactly with the last scene. <laughs> you can get into the pilot immediately. You know, we got to finish the time loop. So, uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Well, the beautiful thing about playing Garcia Flynn is uh, he starts as a really bad guy, and everybody thinks he's a bad guy. Uh, although uh, Sean Ryan, Eric Kripke, and I, we know what's, <laughs> what's coming, and but we're not allowed to talk about that. That was from the first meeting I had with the guys. You know, it was like, you know, as this great character, the only thing you can see is a pilot, but, you know, things to come, and this and that. And then I'm like, okay, if those things are really coming, I love it, but if not, it's coming. So we could see some changes in him towards the end of the season one, you know, when actually guys start believing him that Rittenhouse exists and it's a real threat and that he's actually fighting. So they're fighting common enemy and then season two, they actually start working together, which was like my favorite part is like when Flynn walks in a bunker and he says, this is why I left the jail for, and everybody's like, you brought Flynn here? And I'm like, Cool guy. <laughs> no, that was like, that was a killer. So uh, then Flynn genuinely starts working with them, uh, helping them. And uh, I, I loved working with Malcolm, you know, like uh, Flynn and Rufus had so much fun on set. You know, it was be like, no, I don't want to work with him. And then saving each other butts and all that stuff. It was, it was, it was a pleasure. And Malcolm is a, such a sweetheart. He's such a cool guy. So that was... Uh, and now we're in series finale, and uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Finally, like I said before, we're gonna find out all the answers, and we're gonna see. We're gonna see the real side of Flynn. It was uh, season one. Flynn was always separated uh, from three of them. Every time I would see them, I would start shooting at them, throwing guns, rocks, bombs, nuclear weapons, whatever, you know, so we never actually worked together. Every time if we would work together, it would be over the gun point or something. Towards the end of the season one, and then the first episode, the Benedict Arnold episode, towards the end of the season, we were actually working together. And it was so much fun. I'm like, ah, look at us, we're working together. And then season two, we actually been working together the whole time and it, it it's it's nice to be to be a part of the gang you, you don't try to kill them all the time and uh with the fan this is first time experience for me that i had kind of like direct contact with the fans because i've, I've been always kind of social social media shy i i only had an instagram that was completely private only for like literally 10 people my mom dad brother you know a couple of friends so uh, NBC approached me and said, like, you know, what do you think about opening a public profile for Timeless? And I'm like, mm -hmm, okay, you know, what am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> so it kind of started a little bit shy, and then I kind of started pulling out big guns and throwing the photos in and uh, starting communicating with fans, which is kind of pretty cool. You know, we never had that before. You know, on ER, you would have a letter 
from some country who couldn't even you know, read the letters, it was somebody's handwriting and it was the letter from China, you know, there wasn't Google Translate or whatever, you know, so you would probably just send the photo because you were hoping that's what the letter was about. Today, you got all these messages on Instagram, you can reply to people directly or whatever your social media platform is, you know, so this was like for me, first time in my life, the experience that you actually kind of like really uh, have uh, touch with fans and we've been on comic cons and there was kind of like people there and flying the banners you know save timeless with the helicopters helicopters and it, it was it was pretty much a wild ride you know? i'm almost positive that season two wouldn't happen without uh, without our fans uh, because uh, NBC realized, you know, we have to do something about this. It's like, uh, you know, it's a big show, it's an expensive show, and uh, we know how economics work, you know, but sometimes you need to put economics on the side and do what's right. So that was what second season was all about. And um, I think NBC did a great, made a great decision, you know, it's just they should make one even greater now, but, you know, let's see what's happening. <laughs> Um, and then I definitely, you know, fa fans were a big part of the show and like fans, they're really actually focused and they're like, you know, they want to, they want to see the show going and they're like, they know the details and it's kind of a fandom. No, but Kelly started it. Kelly was the one who was, she was posting on her Instagram constantly, NBC, you need to save timeless. We love this show. Come on. So she started it, you know, it's like people didn't just hijack. Uh, Kelly Clarkson's posts, you know, because they were, they, you know, they were considered that rude, but she was, they knew she's the one who, who was kind of like instigating all of that. And she was like, every time she could, she was like, oh, tonight is timeless. I hope you guys are going to watch it and stuff like that. So that's why, you know. I mean, look, w when I, when I come to my son's school, all the kids love the show because the history is interesting. If it's, you know, Put it this way, you have, you have two kids going to the same school, but, and they're, they're on the same level in history, they're in the same grade, but one guy has a really cool teacher who's kind of like really good teacher, the other guy has a teacher who's not good. This guy hates history, this guy loves history, that's all. So we're, we're, we're telling these stories in a really cool way. History is, in, is interesting, and we... And uh, we, we've been telling all these stories that people, that they got kind of like for, for, uh, forgotten through the history, you know, that because, because of all different reasons. You know, we're telling the stories of women, we're telling the stories of minority, we're telling the stories of these people who were kind of like history, wanted to forget because they were not big enough, they were not powerful enough, you know. And these stories are stories of an underdog, but they're real. They're like, they're real events in history. Like every time we would finish the episode, I would get all these people like coming and so, what, you guys, did you come up with that? I'm like, no, no, check it out, dude. It's, it happens for real. People were like, so people starting, it happened what happened with ER. And the end of the episode, people would say, okay, we can trust that this is a real medicine, what we show, saw in the show, because we had real technical advisors. Same thing with Timeless. In the end of the show, end of the episode, people would be, my God, I didn't know about that. This is like amazing. This happened and we, 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 we don't teach our kids in school about this event. We don't know about this person that actually he was like this or like that. So uh, that's something that, that would attract me to this show. And then the characters were done really cool. You know, the chemistry between everybody, uh, time travel on its own, it's, it's pretty good. And, uh, pretty interesting. I mean, just imagine if you can do it, you know, just an, as an observer. I mean, how many things you would do? Where would you go? It's like, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the chemistry of the whole show, I think it was great, especially by season two, when we kind of get all our kinks out and everything, it was really smooth. And uh, uh, let me tell you, this is the first time in a while that I've been enjoying myself like a pig in the mud. Sometimes you do, you do fun jobs, but there's a lot of work there that it's not fun work, you know, because you have fun work and then you have like, you know, if you have a scene riding horses around and 
um, you know, with a couple of lines, but then you have a lot of action and stuff like that. It's kind of fun. I mean, come on. You started as an actor when you were a kid because you wanted to put a different costume on yourself. You, you know, I started like stealing my grandpa's hat, glasses, gloves, cane, pretending to be somebody else, you know, and that's timeless every episode. You are in different costume, in different era, in different time, and doing all these fun stuff fun things you know so for me it's like really kind of like uh really like not going to work it's kind of more play i mean this is more work than actually what i do in front of the other cameras you know like interviews <laughs> i actually did because every once in a while like i said you have you have to put a lot of work into something before you start filming in order for you to have a really fun uh, day at work so one of my favorite episodes I, I actually had only like one scene in that episode but that one scene was my, one of my favorite it was a scene uh, when I'm speaking when Flynn speaks Spanish with uh, General Santa Ana uh, during the Alamo in Texas and I worked my butt off to, to, to get that Spanish down and I remember coming on set and I was really uh, ready and everything and I've, I've been speaking that Spanish like like I'm a Spaniard and from that moment on all my fans from South America they stopped communicating with me in English you know it's just all Spanish oh my guys I don't speak Spanish you know although I'm better at it now I have to say because I I did a couple of other things with Spanish and so but anyway that was one of my favorite things you know because it was it was a real it was a period it was the Alamo it was uh General Santa Ana, you have this flint gun and a costume and everything, you know. So it was that was that was one of my favorite moments, I have to say. The, the episode I hated, I just like really like. I was like, guys, really? I mean, do you have to do this? It's like when Flynn is start trying to destroy Apollo um, mission eleven, uh, moon landing. I'm like, guys, does it matter? Those are my heroes. I mean, come on, you know. I, I, I shot Abraham Lincoln already. That wasn't cool. I had to explain to my son, uh, teen, so when we see Timeless tomorrow, dad's going to do something really bad. But you have to remember, blah, 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 blah. So I had to explain to my son how to, that I'm killing Abraham Lincoln. And then a couple of episodes later, I'm trying to, you know, kill Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. I'm like, guys, no, come on, please, no, no. And they're like, but look, you're not going to be successful. I'm like, still, I don't want to do that. That's like, that's cool, you know. Anyway, so I really kind of, they insisted on me on doing it. And of course, I had to do it because, you know, I had to. And we made some trades there, you know. They said, like, okay, if you do this, we're going to give you a scene on a horse. And I'm like, okay, okay, then we can do it. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, there, there were things like that when you're playing a bad guy in that capacity that we knew that he's not a bad guy, that he's fighting, that was his way of fighting Rittenhouse, wrong way, kind of like carpet bombing and uh, not thinking about the uh, casualties, but he was kind of trying to do a good thing Flynn's way. <laughs> um, that was like the episode that I really didn't like, that I have to do that because, you know, there you go. It's so difficult to see when you have something really good. It's very difficult to recognize it in the moment. You know, when I was on ER, you know, I knew I'm on a great show, an amazing show, and you're grateful to be there and everything. But, but like 10 years later, you really see how important and great that was. You know, so the same thing is going to be with the timeless. And I know, I know how good the show is, and I know how much fun we had and everything. But a couple of years later, it's going to probably really, really sink. You know.